So I've changed lots of one wheel tires, especially on an XR. So here's a time lapse of me walking you through the process of what I do. Uh, here we are taking off the bottom screws that connect to the foot pad. Uh, you only have to really remove the foot pads because there's two little screws hidden below it that hold on the fender. Um, but they got it to happen. Um, they do actually get stuck sometimes, so you almost have to almost rip them out if they've uh, kind of corroded. And you'll see that in a minute, uh, the uh, screws I take out. So here I am disconnecting the uh, foot pad connector, and off it is. Here is me taking out those two screws that were hidden. They're really small. Um, they're kind of an inset. They really do suck. So if, you, if they just give you problems, well, then just ignore them and just kind of force them out. Uh, here's me taking the other couple of screws out on the bottom side of the fender to get the fender out. And we take the fender off to get to the panel below that, which uh, houses the electronics. So here's me now about to pull off the, that housing. There it is. And now we, we would uh, be disconnecting the uh, power that goes to the motor, but there's a couple of little uh, wire holders that uh, hold down these wires along the frame. So it's a little Phillips screwdriver. Take them off. I put the screws back in the little thing so that we don't lose those little these screws. Here's really important. These are kind of tough. These are two screws that hold on this little plate that um, uh, is holds down the wire that goes from the battery up to the controller. Uh, these are really tough to get out. I've actually even had to use like a specialty screwdriver to get them before. That thing sucks. So um, definitely be sure that you can get that off before you even try this whole process because you might be stopped in your tracks. Here I am taking off the couple electronics that hook up to the motor. Um, and uh, now the motor's disconnected. Now all I have to do is take off the main two bolts on each side. Here I am breaking them off, breaking them. And then as I uh, remove them down, I will, uh, it'll release the tire off of it. I've also positioned the, I've flipped it over so that the, um, once I get disconnected, the wheel will, the assembly will fall down and the tire stay up. Otherwise you have to pick, go opposite of that. <clears throat> okay, so here are, clean up the workspace. This is a bead breaker. Uh, so uh, usually do it three times around. And just again, just to break it off of the seal. It's pretty tough. Watch out to not pinch that wire on the bottom that I just looked at. Um, but yeah, it's pretty tough. If you don't have one of those, it's okay. You can kind of get away with like either a two by four, just manhandling it, but it is, it really does suck. Those things are kind of worth having. All right, so um, I've released it off of the um, rim. I'm kind of looking now for a rag to put this on because there's a bunch of, um, of the slime that's inside the tire. It's just going to get mess all over everywhere. So I'm kind of manning it. Um, there is definitely a technique. I'm not going to go into that now. Uh, look it up. But yeah, there's there's definitely an order. And some guys on the YouTube can just pop these off in just a minute. Um, I struggle with a bit, but eventually it does come out. And um, then uh, then we're able to swap things out. So definitely takes some uh, manipulation. I think it's right about here where I get it off of the front. And then once you can kind of get that off, then it's pretty easy. Yep, there it is. And then um, same kind of method, but this second part comes off way easier. All right, tires off. Now I got a lot of slime. Again, make sure you're on a rag because that slime just sucks and um, we don't want it there anymore. So now I get a little rag um, and I'm going to wipe off all this green stuff. Um, you don't really have to re replace the green slime with it, but you know you might as well, especially if you're running on the asphalt because you're going to pick up a tack or something and uh, it's good to have that seal on in there. So anyways, clean up the old stuff. Um, kind of polish it best I can. And um, I'll get some paper towels and then wipe it down nice and neat. Also, you want some soap to lubricate the new tire once it goes on. Okay, so this is a new Hoosier tire. I like these, they're pretty fun. Um, it's a 11 by 5.5 by 6. And uh, here I am putting on some uh, soap. The best soap is, of course, Dawn soap. I didn't have any. Actually, I did. I just didn't want to go get it. So I just used some regular soap. And I uh, put it all, all around generously on the rubber as well as, of course, on the rim. Uh, when you are seating the uh, bead, 
then um, you really want it to be slippery and work with you. So here I am pushing it in. That's a little bit tough. Sometimes it sucks, but that went on pretty quickly. Once you've got the rim inside the the tire inside the rim, you're okay. Um, I'm about to fill it with air to set it. Uh, this air compressor is great. I set it to about 60, 80 pounds. I used to work really hard to like not do it. You're not supposed to inflate it that much, but I'm doing it. So now I'm actually outside the room in case the thing does blow up. <laughs> I've actually uh, never blown up a tire before, but uh, yeah, you have to get it almost up to about six, about 60 or 80 PSI and just do it, whatever it is. Um, it sucks. It says don't go over like 40 or 50 PSI, but you know, you have to. I spent hours trying to not exceed 60 PSI and it didn't get in. So um, just do it. Um, I haven't busted it, busted a tire yet. All right, so now it's full of air. Actually, I've, I've actually just taken out the air because I'm not going to put some slime in. So um, I'm now currently uh, getting getting taking out the valve stem. Uh, there is a valve stem remover on the top on the undercap of the slime, um, or you can just get one from a bike shop. But uh, it can't be too big and hefty because it doesn't really fit into the um, rim. Okay, I push out air first and then. Um, hook up the tube. That way, as I squeeze the tube, there's negative pressure inside the tube, inside the tire. And so I'm kind of tapping it, trying to just get more and more out of it. That's eight ounces. Um, so yeah, put uh, the full bottle or eight ounces of the slime in it. I'm now putting the valve back in and I put some air back in it. So I mean, we ride on the beach, so I try to just do like maybe 12 or 15 pounds of pressure. If you're urban, then you probably want like 20 or more, but we like our tires mushy uh, when we go on the beach. So I just now put air in the tire. Uh, next, I'm kind of just letting that, that slime kind of go around the edges. I want it to be along the uh, rim um, and then just kind of kind of distribute on the inside of it. Now ready to put it back in. I um, uh, The way I'm putting it in is uh, so that it's, uh, you know, the the wires that are in it uh, match up correctly. Uh, it's a little tough to get these um, bolts back in, but, you know, a little bit of finagling and caress and finesse, and uh, you can get them back in. So don't do them, of course, hard. You know, don't put them in hard uh, at first. You want to get them all four in first, and then you finally tighten them down. Um, uh yeah, again, don't don't tighten one or two and then not have the other ones in. I always want all four in and then you slowly tighten them in. You can do a crisscross pattern if you want. Not that big of a deal, but there it is. All right, I'm now hooking back up the um, wires that are connected to the hubless motor. Um, and it's a little trick to do those, those cylinder ones. I'll let you refer to another YouTube video for that. Uh, I'm now putting that plate back on that uh, kind of um, protects that one heavy duty wire that goes from the battery up to the controller. And um, again, be sure that, that sits really, really well. That is a uh, kind of important piece. You don't want that, you don't want to strip that thing out. Okay, now putting the uh, wire thing back on and then slipping the uh, fender back in, doing the two, the four bolts on the bottom first. Once they're in, uh, flip it around and I actually do forget to put the two little ones in first. I start putting in the, uh, putting the foot pad on, but, uh, I don't go too far <laughs> before doing it. I kind of skipped ahead of myself. All right. So I flip it over and, um, I go to put this uh, foot pad back on and I go ahead and con you connect it up first, but then, um, once the electrode is connected, uh, I forget that I, I actually still need to put the two little itty bitty bolts in the, um, fender. So I put it down like, oh yeah, that's right. Those little guys. So pick it up. Those, those two little dudes I need to put in again. I hate these things. I just soon not even have them exist because they, uh, they kind of, um, uh, strip out, but whatever, there they are. So here I am now putting the foot pad back on. There's four bolts. Um, that one isn't really wanting to cooperate with me. So um, you definitely don't want to strip it because that aluminum really does strip out if you have too many, if you cross thread it and uh, then they just end up spinning. So ideally is that doesn't happen and you really do want to get it aligned pretty well as you put these bolts back in. Uh, again, that aluminum is pretty soft and those threads are um, pretty thin. So 
that's that. Um, I go ahead and also do, I do lastly, or firstly, when I'm disassembling and lastly going to put together these two bolts on the bottom, because you don't really want your uh, foot pad hanging if you did the, uh, these guys first or last. All right, they're on. Um, I go ahead and turn it on, make sure it's working. It is working, so I can continue. So now we can just finish up by putting these wire harnesses back together. Uh, I actually really only need to take off this one that uh, is connected to the motor. Um, there's two on the other side, but I actually even have to take it off because I didn't actually remove that wire. So I'm going to leave both of those on that are that side. Uh, this blinking light's kind of bothering me, so I go to click it off right about there. So it's not bothering you or me. Um, so anyway, so here we are putting that um, wire harness back together. And um, yeah, we're good. So let's go ahead and turn it back over. Step on it, make sure it works. Yes, it works. All right, we did it. All right, lastly, we'll go ahead and put this little rubber seal on the button so sand doesn't get in, and then we'll call it a day. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. And while you're here, check out some of my other videos. Take care.